The Ministry of Defense today validated the first ever national defense policy held at the Sadaudu Kerabajora Conference Center. Defense Minister Sheikh Omar Faiz says such policy details the type of military needed to address the threat to the territorial integrity of the Gambia. Today marks the official unveiling of the country's first ever civilian led draft 2021 defense policy of the Gambia and an invitation to gather our most esteemed colleagues from across government to solicit, of course, and civil society to solicit their views, comments, and reactions of a draft document thus far. It is for this reason that, I, that today's event is entitled or is titled the validation of the draft defense policy of the Gambia. That's what we're going to be doing between today and tomorrow, hopefully. This document reflects a truly homegrown and inclusive process. You will all be aware of the effort and in place since 2018 to develop a country's national security policy architecture, for whom which enormously grateful to His Excellency President Adam Barrow's efforts, who laid a critical foundation with his team for this purpose. The process began with, in 2017, security sector assessment exercise, which our Commander-in-Chief and his team called for to analyze the opportunities and challenges that the country faced in delivering accountable, transparent, professional, a political and responsive security for our people. This strategic and critical analytical exercise helped to inform the country's first ever national security policy. So the assessment moved to the first ever national security policy, which was published in 2019. The policy articulated national principles, beliefs, and aspirations. The national security policy was the first of its kind and took a broad approach to the concept of national security and based this on all critical aspects of human security. It provided an initial set of intentions and broad national security interests that would inform the general direction of travel for all security relevant ministries, of course, including the Ministry of Defense. The Gambian military has, since the end of former President Jamis' rule, been scheduled for key reforms in line with democratic principles. Army Chief Yanko Wadrami was at the validation of the policy. The absence of a defense policy, to some extent, contributed to the lack of the basic capacities to establish a strong national defense and security structures within the Gambia. It is therefore my considered view that the lack of such fundamental national requirement has the potential to expose the Gambia to security threats and challenges which could have undermined its independence, sovereignty, and development. Remember, when we talk of development in every context, it cannot be achieved in the absence of peace and security. There is a symbiotic relationship between peace, security, and development. If I may put it in a contextual terms, peace without security is not sustainable. And security without peace is not durable. We cannot talk of meaningful development in every context in the absence of peace and security. In other words, it is fine to say there's a clear linkage between peace, security, and sustainable development. And if this is what we aspire as a nation, in my humble opinion, we should all collectively work towards the maintenance of peace and security in this country. It serves our collective best interests as a country. It is also my firm conviction that the Gambia National Defense Policy will serve as a policy framework to harmonize our collective national interests with the available resources in designing strong defense strategies and national security. It is assumed that this will enable the Gambia Armed Forces to possess the right capability of defending the nation territory and her people. The right to do so derives strengths and aspirations from the Constitution. 
How do we, as an institution, perform such a credible role? Defend the territorial integrity, and of course, make sure that every Gambians live their dreams in peace and harmony. That is derived from the Constitution. The United Kingdom has been a partner of the Gambia in various areas, including security. David Belgrove, the High Commissioner to the Gambia, expressed his gratitude on behalf of the UK government for partnering with the Gambia Armed Forces on the policy. This is the first time that there will be a defence policy uh, for the Gambia, uh, for the Gambian Armed Forces. And it is particularly special that um, my government, the UK government, have been able to support this. Um, we were at the beginning, at the inception of the Gambian Armed Forces. We partnered with the Gambia at its inception um, when they began the Gambian Armed Forces. So it is a great privilege to partner and continue to partner with the Gambian Armed Forces today. And I'd like to commend the Minister and everybody involved in this initiative. And it is indeed the appropriate time to do this. Um, the Gambia is in a new political era, um, an era where politically we're showing respect for the human rights of its citizens and protects their interests. But as with most work of government and I've been in my government for more years than I care to remember. <laughs> Many more years than I care to remember. But everything starts with the policy. Um, you know, without the policy, which sets the parameters of what you do, it's very difficult to move on. It's very difficult to have the objectives uh, and the goals, unless you've got the parameters, the, the political parameters in which to operate. So it's very, this document is very important. Um, and the purpose of the policy, it sets the directions of what the government does on behalf of its citizens. And from that flows everything else, the strategy, the actual operations. So this is such an important piece of work and I'm very glad that we've been able to support it. And I'd like to thank our defence attaché, uh, Colonel Charles Cooper, who's worked so hard to make sure that the resources were available for this. The validation of the defence policy on Tuesday is indeed evidence government is engaged in the efforts aimed at reforming the country's security sector. Officials will now look forward to the launch of the policy. Matisse Senghor, TFN News View.